Hello. Hi, hi. Don't freak out. I know. I have a new hat on. But I have good reason. This episode is the first of a new series. Yeah, another series. I'm starting two new series. I'm going to be getting the skulls of five of my favorite extinct animals tattooed on me by one of my favorite tattoo artists of all time, Angel Rose. And I'm going to tell you about each of them as she pieces them together on my leg. For episode one, this is Diabloceratops, a type of horned dinosaur that was alive about 80 million years ago. They lived during one of the most badass times in Earth's history and looked badass as well. The perfect combination of traits to make for a sick tattoo. So, Without further ado, my name is Lindsay Nicole, and this is Extinct. Extinct. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> So yeah, this is my outside hat, as in this is the hat that I usually wear. My boonie hat is like my work hat at this point. I didn't want to wear my boonie hat while sitting down for 10 hours a day. The tattoo sessions are 10 hours a day. That would be uncomfortable and not make sense. So for consistency purposes, I'm wearing it here too. I know this is a lot of change, but I hope you understand. I want consistency. I like consistency. You might know Angel from Ink Master. She is unbelievably talented. So I'll be taking trips up to Portland, Oregon to show Kunin Tattoo for each episode. It's run and owned by her friend Bob Jones, who was also on Ink Master. But actually, Angel is going to be opening up her own shop in Maui by the end of this year, which is sick. She's originally from there, so it'll be a full circle moment for her. Angel and I have actually known each other for a really long time. We met when I was 19 at an 18 plus club called Tiger Heat in LA. We've been mutuals ever since, so I watched her as she went on Ink Master, and she watched me as I started making videos about animals, which is really crazy, because now we're here. This feels like, this feels way too small. Are you just tiny? This feels little. This feels very little. I don't know. What do you think? Like, let's print it bigger and look at it. Okay. I got a back tattoo that I think was a little bit too small because I didn't want it to take that long. But now I look at it and I wish it was bigger. And it's just like the added time is what maybe like 30 minutes, an hour. Makes sense to do bigger. Okay. So I need you to be able to stand naturally. Just pretend you're like in line at the bank. I'm in line at the bank. You are in line at the bank. You're not thinking about somebody it's taking putting a forever. <laughs> Slides. Thank good. you. Aren't they cool? Yeah. They're very comfortable. Dude, you know what was like actually such a fucking shock to us, Lindsay? When yes. we got your images of your leg and you had on like no five less than toe rings. Five toe rings. How yeah. did I have so many toe rings? You won't be seeing those. <laughs> no free feet pics. The reason for Diablo Ceratops is probably not very cool. I just wanted to pick a really cool Ceratopsian dinosaur. Ceratopsian? Ceratopsian. As always, we're gonna get the general information out of the way. Like I said, Diabloceratops is a horned dinosaur, scientifically called a Ceratopsian. You're probably most familiar with that Ceratops section of the word from Triceratops, one of the most iconic dinosaurs of all time. Their name translates to three-horned face for the three horns on their face. So Diabloceratops translates to, you guessed it, devil horned face. Sick as fuck. The name is sick, they also look sick. Once again, that makes for a great tattoo. Diabloceratops was alive about 80 million years ago, towards the end of the Cretaceous period, the period that ended with the big asteroid. Very drama very Hollywood. But this was about 14 million years before then, nowhere near the asteroid. But that doesn't mean shit wasn't heinous during this time. Obviously, we had the dinosaurs. We all know how horrific they could get. That wasn't all. There was also shit like Cephactinus in the waters, 20 feet long and disgustingly predatory. Often would kill themselves eating something too big for them to handle. Gluttonous, and we have fossil evidence of that. Parapuzosia, very big. Very cool ammonite. Their shells alone got to about eight and a half feet long. Not necessarily heinous, but if you're one of those people that doesn't like big things in the water, you would probably hate this. What is it called to be afraid of big shit in the water? Megalohydrothalassophobia, apparently. Megalohydrothalassophobia, boom. This was also the time of transitional snakes, like Najash, only it hide limbs. Snakes used to have limbs. Well, I guess not snakes, the ancestors of snakes. And then the ancestors of snakes first lost their forelimbs and then their hind limbs. Pretty sick. This was the time of snakes with feet. I made a whole video on snakes with feet, by the way, if you wanna check it out. There's also shit like Alberta Nectes, big ass necks. More like a big old Nectes. Alberta Nectes, a big old Nectes. Hmm? Hmm? And also Mosasaurs. And a whole other variety of things that would have made it impossible for humans to survive during this time. There's a reason why the mammals were all wrecked. Couldn't get anything else done. But Diabloceratops got by. They're found in what would have been warm tropical habitat. Kind of place you could spend a day with a few pina coladas and a bottle of bug spray. But today we know the area they were found in as Utah. So the first skull of Diabloceratops was found in a near a city called Nipple Butte, okay. Utah. All right. I'm yeah. Familiar. <laughs> I'm familiar. <laughs> I'm actually from there. <laughs> the first fossil, a skull, was discovered in 1998 there. 
and this was a huge deal. This was the first ceratopsian to be found in the area, ever. Unfortunately, a team wasn't able to excavate it until 2000, so it was a bit fucked up, exposed to the elements for a couple years. But just two years later, another more complete more well-preserved skull was found in the same formation, this time near a place called Last Chance Creek. It was discovered by a paleontologist named Don DeBlue. After days rock sawing it out of the sandstone and another few years waiting for it to be airlifted out of the area, the skull was then prepped for 800 hours. And then a small portion of the skull had been damaged, so they reconstructed it in order to make it all complete. And finally, Don and paleontologist Jim Kirkland described the skull as a new species, Diabloceratops etoni. Diablo in reference to the massive horns coming out of its frill, and etoni in honor of paleontologists named Jeffrey G. Eaton, who helped establish the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument where the skull was found. This skull is officially called the Last Chance Skull. It's the most complete skull found so far of the two, and this is the one I'm getting tattooed. Don't you have like sleeves? What are you tripping about? Ouch! Just kidding. <laughs> just tell the people how you're feeling with this. I'm gonna keep laughing and she's gonna mess up. I won't mess up. Okay. I, I think I'm starting to like getting tattooed. There you go. <laughs> If you're not super into dinosaurs, Diabloceratops is probably feeling like just a slightly different Triceratops, three horns tank. That's valid. Triceratops is very famous and very sick. There are a lot of similarities between the two. Triceratops just so happens to be the most popular because they try, they have three horns. They're also the largest, I think. I think they get to like 30 feet long. Jesus. Yeah. I was initially that gonna- That we know of. That we know of. Oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> 30 feet long and 10,000 pounds, with a skull alone that could be over eight feet long, which by the way, I was pretty close. This is exactly six feet. Not this, but this one, like right here. So I guess I have to figure out what the fuck eight feet is now. Probably here. No, I probably can't reach eight feet. <laughs> no, it's probably right here. Skull alone, that's crazy. 8.2 feet long. That's so long. That's really big. That's like, that's like two Lindsay's. No way, you're not four feet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> well, the problem is this this tattoo is going to take so long because I'm 6'10". Yeah. yeah. It lived later than Diabloceratops II, about 68 million years ago, to boom, asteroid, between that time. It was mostly found in what is now Montana. Here's how Diabloceratops compares. How big was Diabloceratops? I'm looking at my notes, by the way. I'm not looking on Wikipedia. Is that something that people <laughs> accuse you of? Yeah, they're like, she's literally just re-explaining a Wikipedia article. No, no, I'm not. One of the skulls was three feet long from the beak to the back of the frill, but the horns, these horns up here, were one and a half feet long, so added like another 50% of the length. Big boy. Big boy. It was smaller, probably about 15 feet long and 2,800 pounds, based on their three foot long skull. Fuck, I just have to like figure out all the measurements of this. I bet this is three feet. Came up to right here on me. Still a big skull, still huge actually. But what it lacked in size and made up for in style. They had two big horns above the eyes, kind of more like Triceratops than most of its own group, and a deep beaked snout for munching plants, and those two massive frill horns. So four and a half foot tall skull in total, which is probably, well, that's like a foot less than me. Maybe here? That's big, huge. And oh man, if looks could kill. I think I said this in the History of Life episode, but this looks like the cover of a Lorna Shore album. Its frill was also loaded with spikes and unique features that set it apart from its relatives. Let's get into the relatives. As I said, Diabloceratops and Triceratops are Ceratopsians. More specifically in a family called Ceratopsidae. We're gonna do another fucking diagram. This time I kept the whiteboard not bolted to the wall, because why did I do that in the first place? Okay, so here we've got a giant circle of ceratopsians. Inside that circle, we have ceratopsids. So all ceratopsids are ceratopsians, but not all ceratopsians are ceratopsids, like squares and rectangles, that whole thing. Ceratopsids are obviously known for their big horns and frills. Some early ceratopsians didn't look like that at all, like Cetacosaurus. What the fuck is this? Horned faces, but no frills. Ixnay on the frills, not there yet. The frills and the much larger facial horns evolved over time. One key transitional fossil is Zuniceratops, alive about 92 million years ago. It had two horns above its eyes, no nose horn, and a very simple, modest frill, sort of an evolutionary halfway point. So this was a Ceratopsian, but not a Ceratopsid. So Zuniceratops was here, not here. Yet. Then, ceratopsids came along and split into two main groups, chasmosaurians. They had very long skulls, 
big brow horns, moderately decorated frills. Personally, Chasmosaurus from 83 million years ago makes me a little sick. Actually, maybe I like them. But this lineage would eventually include the famous Triceratops. Also included Cosmoceratops. Weird as fuck. There's also one called Cosmoceratops. I think you're gonna like this one. Me? It looks like a dork. Okay, I'm ready. Look at how the horns, like the frills Dude, go over. they have that at the Salt Lake thing too. Oh, yeah, I bet they do. It looks Why like it do, has wait, a little comb over. I thought that was like because the like um, skull got like affected by time. I thought that like when I looked at that skull, I thought it was like folded over because it got fucked up. No, that's a whole that's species. That's just how they are. That's a whole species. And the second group, the Centrosaurians. Short, deep skulls, big nose horns, which some later lost, and frills that looked like a weaponized crown. Some cool looking Centrosaurians are Styracosaurus, which was a contender for this tattoo, but I went with Diabloceratops instead. Machyroceratops, Lokiceratops, a new find, sick as fuck, and Pachyrhinosaurus, another contender for this tattoo. I was initially thinking of getting Pachyrhinosaurus, which is another Ceratopsian, because last summer I went to a Pachyrhinosaurus fossil bed where they have found this herd of maybe like 10,000 individuals. Like it's definitely over a thousand. I might be exaggerating 10,000 though. Of just the same species. They must've been wiped out by a flash flood or something. This fossil bed, they've been working on it for 30 years and they think they probably have another 50 years to get through these bones. But I don't like their skulls as much. I think Diabloceratops looks really sick. See, Lindsay, Lindsay did this smart thing where she chose the cooler looking one. Yeah. Despite the emotional attachment to the other dinosaur. Yeah. Your tattoo artist will thank you for picking the sick one. Yeah. <laughs> and Diabloceratops is the oldest and most primitive centrosaurine that we know of. And also the first one found south of Montana. So, pretty sick. So it has some transitional features between early and later centrosaurines. Like an extra hole behind the nasal opening called an accessory. Antorbital. Finestra. You don't need to remember that. It's just an extra hole that was lost in later centrosaurines, probably to help strengthen the skull for combat purposes. Because yeah, the decorations all over the skulls were not for nothing. The horns were definitely more obvious, defense against predators. But what about their frills? Probably a whole mix of things, like defense, protecting the neck from predators, combat. There's evidence of healed injuries that suggest they butted heads with each other, possibly display, like peacocks. Bigger, fancier frills might have helped attract mates or scare off rivals. And some fossils of frills have grooves for blood vessels and nerves, so it's possible they change the skin color on their frills for even more dramatic displays, which is sick. But unfortunately, we might never know. But at least we have sick ass skulls to look at in the meantime or instead. <laughs> This is gonna end up being like a 15 minute long video max. I'm gonna make half of it just information and then the other half is just us hanging out, learning about tattoos. Maybe Angel explains what technique she's using at the moment. It's the flick shading, yes. Flick shading. No, 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 that's oh. like, it's a joke. <laughs> The best way to describe it is to just say that I'm whip shading with my liner. Whip shading. Whip shading. Whip shading. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I'm just running it really slow and I have a really fine point needle, like a three, a tight three. That's how I can get this cool, like kind of bony texture that's sort of like, I don't know, it looks almost stippled, but it's not like a true stipple. Yeah. And then that, that action happens from me just slowing the machine down and moving my hand faster than the machine. So it doesn't create a line, it creates a line of dots, right? Mm. Contrary to what you would think, it's very, very gentle. It doesn't hurt very much. I don't feel anything. Yeah. This no, part no, hurts. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm now no longer using <laughs> yeah. the, the baby needle. I'm starting to not like this. <laughs> Where do they get the people that they tattoo? Uh, they sign up. Yeah, so if you ever want to be insane, you can sign up to be an Ink Master Canvas. Um, I don't recommend it. I don't think I would ever do that. Yeah, don't do it. Curious. Yeah, no, people generally sign up. It's generally like people that just want like a free tattoo and don't care what it is. I tell all of them that they're crazy as soon as they get in my station. I'm like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Are they allowed to say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore once they know what it is or no? No, um, I mean, technically, like they have free will, right? Like they can walk out, but they I, completely I, contractually, screw. they, I don't think are supposed to. Cause there were a couple, I've seen a few episodes where they did leave. Yeah, yeah. it's happened. And, and you, I can tell you right now that shit is not staged mm -hmm. because whenever somebody does walk out, somebody from the production has to step in and get the tattoo. 
Shut the fuck up. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy that everything on Ink Master is fake, and I'm like, not really, no. Like, <laughs> At least not that kind of thing. Like, like people are like, oh, the time limits are fake. I'm like, they are so not fake. <laughs> <laughs> We decided to go with Cooksonia for a plant backdrop, which is from a completely different time period. Cooksonia is from the Silurian. It looks sick as fuck. It's one of the early land plants, some of the first vascular plants that we know of. I'm so happy with how this tattoo turned out. I think it perfectly represents how badass Diabloceratops was. Now I get to wear it on me forever. And unfortunately, I can't show you in live time because I've already got the next episode tattooed on me and I want it to be a surprise. I think it's a pretty obvious one and I might've just given it away, but I didn't give away where it's gonna go and where it's gonna go is gonna look sick. Maybe that gave it away, I don't know. But if you liked this episode, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple weeks. And check out my other series that I'm doing right now, The History of Cats, that we know of. It's pretty sick if you haven't checked it out already. Keep up with behind the scenes updates and live streams on my Patreon where you can also check out our Discord server. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!